Hi everyone, this talk is about guidelines for those recovering from COVID-19. The battle isn't over yet. In my practice so far, I've managed cases from mild to severe with no age or class fines. A good diet promotes faster recovery. Few aspects that need to be kept in mind apart from just improving the immunity are or managing other complications, so for example, there's hypertension or diabetes or kidney dysfunction or the cardiac involvement. Digestive disturbances also, loss of taste and smell, difficulty in breathing and difficulty in swallowing, especially those who have uh, been intubated uh, during hospitalization. We now know that COVID is an inflammatory condition that can have lasting effects for up to months after discharge, affecting different organs, especially the liver. So we have to keep the patient under observation. Let's look at the first point, which is calories. Adequate calories must be provided depending on the patient's nutritional status. Now, malnutrition does not only mean having a low body weight or being underweight. It is also the inability to maintain your fat to muscle mass, which is your body composition. Patients with obesity have uh, respiratory dysfunction, impaired immune function, increased inflammation and low lung volume or muscle strength. These individuals are more prone to uh, pneumonia and cardiac stress. Obesity with diabetes is even more complicated. So, a planned diet is crucial for recovery, ensuring healthy fat loss and maintenance of lean mass. The second point is about protein. Now, obviously, this is indicated as top priority. It is recommended to be kept at around 1.2 to 1.3 grams per kg ideal body weight per day. Uh, increasing the supplementation of branching amino acids to up to 50% to prevent muscle loss and enhance the strength of the respiratory muscles. Whey protein is the ideal choice uh, if the budget permits, at least for the first two to three weeks. If not, fresh curd, bunny, or thoroughly cooked eggs can be given, uh, depending upon the patient's main preferences and digestive function. Protein must be individually adjusted with regards to the nutritional status, physical activity level, uh, the disease severity and the digestive tolerance. Third point is about carbohydrates. Now the total must not exceed 120 to 150 grams per day. The usage of carbs leads to the production of carbon dioxide, which we called as, uh, which is called as a respiratory quotient, which must be avoided to decrease the respiratory distress. If the patient is diabetic, then of course he has to be monitored closely for episodes of glucose highs and lows and the medication needs to be adjusted accordingly. Persistent high glucose is an effect of the inf uh, infection and can also delay your recovery. So opt for pulses, dairy products and vegetables over grains and definitely avoid fruit juices. Next is about fat. Now it helps to maintain calories, so the proportion of fat can be increased in the diet Give priority to the use of uh, medium chain uh, fatty acids and also increase the proportion of the omega-3 fatty acids and the omega-9 fatty acids. Essential fatty acids like the omega-3s play a major role in immune responses. They reduce inflammation. So here we are talking about coconut oil, butter, ghee, nuts, MCD oil supplements can also be used. Olive oil, rice bran oil and groundnut oil can also be used for cooking. The fifth point is about vitamins and minerals. So routine supplements is definitely needed with an emphasis on adequate vitamin B, C, vitamin D, zinc and selenium. Iron deficiency has to be treated. Sixth point is about immunonutrients. Now these have considerable influence on your uh, immune function. There are several types such as arginine, glutamine etc. Now glutamine also supports your digestive system. Seventh point is about probiotics. The alteration of the healthy gut bacteria is due to the increase of the gut permeability or reduced barrier function. This happens because of the infection and also because of the treatment that is given with antibiotics or if they were prescribed to treat or prevent your secondary infections. So this drives the inflammation further. Now probiotic supplements are able to restore your immunity but they need to be prescribed by a doctor. The eighth point is about fluids. Now, fever is associated with excess loss of fluids and salts and increased metabolism, which can lead to dehydration. So, hydration should be maintained sufficiently. Thin buttermilk soups, coconut water, unless there is a potassium restriction, uh, salted lemon water and ORS can be used. For cardiac and kidney patients, the volume of uh, water and salts along with other electrolytes may have to be restricted. So your doctor will actually guide you with this or your dietitian can also uh, monitor your electrolytes. 
Next is about the meal frequency and consistency. If the patient's dry cough and sore throat is severe, then solid food intake may decrease. So, we should encourage warm and soft foods and supplements can be used. Small frequent feeds uh, would be better if the appetite is less, especially if there is a loss of uh, taste and smell. And the timing of fluid consumption should be also in between meals, not alone. ICU patients can have swallowing issues because of prolonged uh, post-extubation swallowing disorder after discharge. This can last for even up to 4 months and has to be managed. Another issue that is seen in these patients is digestive disturbances and uh, the meal plan must be customized as per the patient's. Mm-hmm.